Hey everyone, it's been over two minutes and I haven't been raped yet, but somewhere out there is an expert willing to testify that I was. Hi, I'm Diana Davison, and today I want to talk about the whores of the court. Now this is actually the name of a book talking about experts who come in to basically oath help or bolster the credibility of a witness or a complainant. This is generally barred from court, but they found a way to work around it. Now, there's essentially a whole industry that's built around this, where they go and they testify and they charge a lot of money to do so, but built around specifically bolstering the credibility of women who otherwise would not be found credible in court. And to give you an example of how this works, I'm going to talk about a recent sexual assault trial. It's one I've been asked to talk about quite a bit, but haven't done so thus far. It is the trial of Bill Cosby. Now, some people may not be aware that the complainant in this trial, Andrea Constand, had a number of credibility problems. Aside from changing the time frame of the alleged assault and other details, Constand contacted Cosby around six dozen times, trying to get event tickets, chatting away for about half an hour, going to see him live, and bringing him a sweater as a gift. Because apparently Bill Cosby didn't have enough sweaters. Now, generally, Constand just wasn't acting like a victim of rape. So the state called an expert witness to bolster Constand's credibility by testifying that she's an expert on sexual assault trauma and it's totally normal for victims to act like non-victims. Of course, it's also normal for non-victims to act like non-victims, but we'll just set that conundrum aside for the moment. Now, I happen to know a few things about rape experts, and one of those things was that I knew if I went looking, I'd find her saying something outrageously stupid. Well, I was right. Meet Veronique Vallier. Well, one of the things I do as a psychologist is I work with victims and I work with rapists, and I learn a lot from them. Now, you might think Miss Vallier is going to explain to us what she learned from rapists. No, instead she wants to tell us how she understands rape victims by what she learned from her dog. Sophie. She just lays there every day, grunting, snoring, farting, and her total bliss, wide open, exposed, unaware. That's how Sophie is. You can see. Wide open and exposed. So is she. But the difference is... Hmm. One's a dog? our judgment of them. They both have exactly the same thing in common. They're completely vulnerable. No, Sophie isn't shit-faced drunk, passed out in an alleyway. But how we perceive and judge and criticize their vulnerability is the difference between Sophie being adorable and this woman being blamed for her own sexual assault. Can you believe we're even having this conversation? This woman just testified in a court of law and now she's telling us that most of what she knows about women comes from her dog, Sophie. Um, Sophie taught me that she sleeps like this because she sleeps in a safe house. Now, I missed the part in here where Sophie apparently sent a bunch of sexual text messages and tried to hook up with the guy later by calling him six dozen times. And I need you to put me out of a job. And I'd like to help you with that. Now, one of the problems, aside from thinking that women are like dogs, is that this individual is testifying as an advocate. She is going in to oath help with the belief that every accusation actually means the guy's guilty. She's reversing the burden of proof, and she has an agenda here. It's not to find the truth in a case about an individual. It's to get statistics. Six people end up in jail for committing rape out of a thousand. Now, this claim assumes that all 1,000 accusations are true. And we can't help someone who equates women with dogs with reason, but I do want to show you her lack of respect for the legal system. In part, this reflects the numbers that we saw earlier because the victim is not only vulnerable during the attack, but that victim is vulnerable during the investigation and prosecution and exposure to the community who criticizes and judges and devalues the vulnerability instead of holding the offender accountable. Well, we don't actually have a victim until the end of a trial in a sexual assault allegation. 
and the most important time to remember this is only an allegation is in the investigation. And as a mirror of our society, the criminal justice system will follow along, and that will, I believe, will help those numbers. All right, so this focus on numbers is terrifying for anybody who cares about wrongful convictions. They don't care about the facts of the case. They want the conviction rate to match their estimate, their understanding of how many sexual assaults take place. So this woman's going into a courtroom trying to help up the numbers of convictions. She doesn't actually know the supposed victim and she doesn't know the accused. She has one agenda and that is to increase convictions. Should never be allowed in a court of law. Now, I've shown you how she's compared women to dogs and I want to mention another kind of expert testimony that takes place in courtrooms and has for much longer and that is battered woman syndrome. Well, battered woman syndrome, aside from that in these studies they show that most women don't kill, they use this to explain why some women sometimes kill their husband and then they argue that they weren't responsible. The premise of this is something called learned helplessness which was also a study about dogs where they would shock dogs and then sometimes these dogs would stop trying to escape and so they have taken this study of dogs and they've used it to explain behavior of some women. I'm going to show you two pictures right now. This is a dog and this is a woman. Do we really need to talk about the difference? And let's look at a woman who's not at all like Sophie the happy little pug dog. That's Jody Arias. Arias plotted and killed her ex-boyfriend Travis Alexander. She was convicted in May of 2013 after a high-profile trial that captured the attention of a global audience. Part of the trial was the testimony of a domestic violence expert named Alice LaViolette, who stated that she believed Jody Arias was a battered woman. The prosecutor confronted LaViolette with a lecture she gave saying Snow White was a battered woman. Ma'am, isn't it true that there's a syllabus that, in that indicates, for example, that from 11.10 to 12.10 in Studio 3, Alice LaViolette presented a presentation titled, Is Snow White a Battered Woman? Would that be true? That's the title. It was a catchy title. <laughs> After lying to police for four hours about the killing, Jody finally begins to sing, literally. About what else? Memory. Yes, memory. There's always an expert willing to testify why women can't remember the salient details important to a criminal trial. Our courts have turned into a joke. Even if no one's alive, even if it's a myth, even if it's all made up, you can still come to the opinion. Wait till he finishes the question. Finish your question. Isn't it true that you can still come to the opinion that the person in this fantastical world is a victim of domestic violence? What comes next is the most bizarre behavior yet. From the woman who now says she shot Alexander in the head, stabbed him 27 times, and slit his throat ear to ear in self-defense. A glimpse into the mind of Jody Arias. <laughs> now, as a well-written article published in The Daily Caller says about the Cosby trial, it's a circular assertion. Rape victims often appear non-credible because rape victims often appear non-credible. How do you determine who's a real victim if you can't rely on reliability? If we believe the expert testimony, the obvious conclusion should be to stop relying on rape accusers, period, absent outside evidence. In other words, if we know that victims regularly change their stories, exaggerate details, and minimize the event's significance, then we're convicting too many accused rapists because non-victims do the same things. I'd rather a system willing to convict with she said evidence alone, but advocates for sexual assault can't have it both ways. Now, while I disagree with the author that we should go ahead and try people in cases with no evidence, I do agree that we need to be able to assess credibility. And that means that people who want to be seen as credible have to act in a credible way. What have we come to? 
Are we so afraid to admit that women sometimes lie about rape that we need to call upon the pugs of the world to rescue them in court? How did we get to a point where I'm doing a video now to explain to you why women aren't dogs? How did judges let this happen? Veronique Vallier is not testifying as an expert. She's entering the courtroom trying to get conviction numbers up and she'll say anything to make that happen. Now I have a piece of advice for victims of actual sexual assault. Go into the courtroom, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And stop letting women tell you that you're like a dog. You know what? Get these charlatans out of our courtrooms and we'll talk about it later.